No What's up, Gator Nation, and welcome into the Gators Online podcast. And it is game day in Gainesville, Florida, the orange and blue game. And Nick Del Torre and I have a great show lined up for you guys. Nick, you feeling good? Yeah. It, it, hey, it's a practice game. Al and I were saying we're talking about practice, uh, but it is start, a scrimmage, though. So a little, start, little, yeah, little starting yesterday, up. there was some traffic. So I know some people didn't like that the game was changed from Saturday. Uh, to Thursday, but I think if you go on Gators Online and look at that uh, that recruit list, you didn't might, stop Cormani McLean from a no. It might change your mind about about uh, moving the game because I think that that tactic for recruiting worked. Um, but just driving around town yesterday, it felt like uh, I was getting it took me a little longer to get home from Publix, and I think there's some people in town. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how many people are at the game tonight uh, on a Thursday night. Well, we mentioned Cormani McLean, the headliner for Money. the visitors today. Money. Well, we got some guests on today's show that are. Bigger than him. Yeah, I mean both of them. Both easy. Both. I don't know which one. I don't know which one of our two guests is my favorite. I mean, it's a battle between Nick and I today over which one of us are more elated about getting our favorite guests. But today, to preview the spring game, to talk Florida football, and to discuss the event happening on the North Lawn today at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, we've got Johnny Townsend. And Steve Spurrier live right here in Spurrier's Gridiron Grill to talk about all those topics here. So we got a great show lined up for you guys. Um, Nick and I will try to keep it professional, <laughs> but can't promise anything. Well, there's a little bit of swooning. It's like uh, like when people like <laughs> like like when people uh, when the Beatles came to America and, and girls and people are just fainting before concerts. We're gonna try not to faint. Um, as, as we talk to our heroes tonight. Yes, absolutely. And uh, obviously, Gator fans are hoping to he- see some heroes at, at Steve Spurrier Florida Field tonight. Spring game is split up. We now know the rosters. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know it's basically first-team offense versus second-team defense, second-team offense versus uh, first-team defense, and uh, pretty obvious kind of how now that's split up, but also interesting to see that Billy Napier split up the staff as well. I mean, it's he, he's also given guys – that are, you know, GAs, quality control, their opportunity to coach in this game. I think mm-hmm. that's so cool. They split up the equipment staff. Yes, they split up <laughs> the nutritionists. Everyone is split. Um, Randy I, Mickens has got some some beef going now with his video yeah, team. Yeah, we got to watch out. I think Jordan's going to play dirty because Randy's gonna, uh, working on the torn ACL. Uh, so we'll watch out for Jordan Harold and see if he, he keeps it above the knees today. Um, <laughs> I think that's interesting, you know. Um, I didn't love going and covering a spring game when Chris Doring is catching a touchdown. Nothing wrong with Chris Doring, but he's not. He's, he's caught plenty of touchdowns in the swamp. Doesn't need to catch anymore. Doesn't need to catch anymore. And uh, I think the biggest thing that I'm excited about, well, first off, our first spring game since 2019. Yes. Um, and, and that one, I don't, I can't remember which former Gator caught a touchdown, but he didn't catch any of the next season. So uh, I think the biggest thing I'm excited about is, is just that the team has been split. They're going to, they're not even going to share a locker room. Someone's in, the, I don't know which team's in the visitor locker room. We'll find out after. Yeah, the game, I mean, but someone's in a, a stinky small locker room. Who, who earned the right to be in the home locker room? Who earned the right to be in the visiting locker room? That'll be interesting to see that dynamic. We'll see if they have a little steak and beans action steak going on. Like, beans. uh, we'll hear Coach Spurrier talk about, but uh, I just like that they created competition yeah. for this game throughout the whole, throughout the whole week. And, um, Honestly, this is what it's about. I think especially with a new organization and a new staff on board, um, it, they kind of really see what what these guys are made of. And uh, I think it's going to just create a much better atmosphere and a much better product on the mm-hmm. field tonight in the Swamp. Yeah, and uh, I guess you know an old Will Muschamp saying, it's good on good tonight. So uh, if you look at the blue roster uh, tonight, that's your first team offense. Uh, you look at the orange roster, confusing. Orange is wearing white jerseys. Yes. Uh, so – don't, don't don't get thrown don't off by that. that up. Yeah. Uh, and the orange is the first team defense. So you're going to see uh, the first team go against the first team. And I think that's probably, you know, a good move for Billy Napier in his first year. Hey, we are bringing competition and or you're saying you're going to and then and then you do it. You're yeah. going to have the first team go out there and just beat up on the second and third team and, you know, have one of those spring games where it's 65 to nothing and you know, yeah. blue beats orange. Um, the other thing I'd like to see, though, and, and we can get we're going to get into some stuff we're looking for tonight. I want to see the quarterbacks, both quarterbacks, Jack Miller and Anthony Richardson, play with the second team. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think so much about a quarterback is elevating the players around you. And and you detailed this in in your report 
And um, if you guys subscribe to Gators Online, you know this. Yeah. You know this. Take all this. Take advantage of the spring ball special while it's still going, folks. Yeah. Ten dollars get you four months. Uh, we got more. More coming. <laughs> Um, I want to see the the both quarterbacks play with the second team. Can you lead a touchdown drive with the second team yeah. uh, offense against the first team defense? Can Especially you? if the other guy can't. Yeah, that that to me is telling. If you can take and, and not that anyone is bad, but there's a reason there's a first team and a second team. Nice. So if you can play with the second team and lead a touchdown drive, um, you don't even have to throw. Just lead the drive. Um, that that's telling to me. So I'd like to see both quarterbacks play with the first and second team tonight. And also just, you know, is Anthony Richardson coming off of that injury kind of ready to take that next step mm -hmm. in his progression? And has he really picked up this offense? I think fans want to see that. I'm interested to see, and we, we have basically five storylines that you can follow for the game tonight at Gators online that you can go check out. I think a lot of people are fascinated to see how the carries are going to get not necessarily distributed, but who might steal the show in the backfield tonight. Yeah. I think everyone's been uh, on the staff has been really excited about Lorenzo Lingard. Um, he's had a great spring. Uh, Montreal Johnson is, is a monster. Um, Physical. Physically. Yeah. When you, I mean, uh, you looked at, I looked at his roster before, you know, spring started and then you see him in person. You're like, all right, that like, he is as big as Lorenzo Lingard <laughs> is. And, and those two guys uh, just shorter. Yeah. Are, are physically impressive. Um, he, he he's running people over in practice and maybe we'll see that tonight. Um, it's interesting to see last year at UL Billy Napier had four guys, including Leo Lewis ha have a hundred carries. So I don't know that there's a competition and, and jealousy among these guys are probably looking at that and drooling and thinking, well, we, hey. can, all, we can all carry the ball a hundred times. Yeah. And, and nobody then, did last year for Florida and especially no Naquan Wright tonight. Yeah. So it's really a big opportunity for Bowman. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've mentioned uh, Lingard and Johnson already. And and we'll see when Chief Border said those two guys have been the toughest to tackle. But sometimes you don't get an opportunity to tackle Bowman. Yeah, so that's that's one thing. Yeah. We'll, we'll see if he can break loose. I think looking over to the defensive side of the ball, you know, what's this new look scheme going to look like with Patrick mm -hmm. Tony? Kind of our first glimpse of that and how the players, I think, especially in the secondary with him coaching them and Corey Raymond, how do they look? Is, are we going to get some no busted coverages tonight? That would be nice, right? I mean, I think. How about, how about no penalties? That, no false starts. That's that's another item as well. Asked Darnell Stapleton um, when we interviewed him on on Tuesday. Uh, how many? Did you go back and count up the false starts? He goes, "Why would I do that to myself? <laughs> like I can just look up the number right yeah. there. I'm not going to put myself through that misery." Um, but unfortunately, you mentioned the last scrimmage uh, on Saturday, the first time that they had played in the stadium. That was the theme, right? And that's what everybody saw coming out of the scrimmage, how upset Billy Napier was. If you guys thought he was upset in the press conference, you didn't see anything. I'll just leave it at that. Um, we did. Uh, but they really took a step back after only having two penalties in the first scrimmage, which he was pleasantly surprised by. So maybe being in the stadium for the first time, being a little bit antsy because spring in camp is coming to an end. Whatever the case may be, they got to play a cleaner game on Thursday night and start changing that trend. Uh, and that might be a whole culture thing. That might take time to to you know fix it and to get out of the team. But certainly, if you look at Florida's season in twenty twenty one, just over and over again, shooting yourself in the foot. So it's something that Billy Napier obviously you don't have to like I said. You don't have to go back and watch the film to know that this was an undisciplined football team <laughs> and, and how much it hurt them. So, yeah, he was not happy. Um, and, and that's definitely something he's going to have, um, you know, to focus on and to get out of this team uh, before the game starts. And I think certainly another storyline to follow, and this is you kind of always get this in the spring, is are there going to be some guys that emerge? Mm. Will we see some players tonight that fans and media have kind of been waiting to break out? that start to show signs that they're ready to do that. Will it be, you know, a guy that's red shirt and kind of been waiting in the wings? Will one of the transfers show up big time? We've already talked about Montreal Johnson, Jack Miller. Could he have a huge night? And then even some of the freshmen, you know, Devin Moore had a pick in the scrimmage mm -hmm. last Saturday. So could he or one of the other freshmen make a play? We've heard a lot of great things about Chris uh, on the defensive line. So, uh, that's kind of what I'm I'm looking forward to. I think fans always are looking forward to in a spring game is who might be some new guys that they're going to be watching a lot this coming year. Yeah, like I like I look when I think when people ask me who I'm looking at for next season, I probably name you know Javon Dexter, Brenton Cox. Um, 
I don't need to see them tonight. No. Like, show me Chris McClellan. Um, really? Let, I mean, we need to see, see Antoine Powell. We, yeah. I mean, he's been here for this will be his third year, I believe. Um, and, and we haven't really seen a lot of him. So let's see Dewan Black. Yeah, I think I think for the spring game, at least for me, um, I, I want to see younger players. Like Ventro Miller doesn't need to be in pads tonight. <laughs> I, I know what Ventro Miller is. Um, I know what he means to the team. I'm sure he wants to play. He yeah. wants to go hit somebody. He's been held out already this spring because yeah. of his class. But like, I, I don't need to see him that much. I don't need to see that much of Trey Dean. You know, um, I, I want to see some of these younger players. I think Devin Moore is a guy that the coaching staff is in love with. Had a great spring. Um, really benefited from enrolling early. Um, let me see those younger guys. And, and, uh, and that, I think that's really what I'm looking for. I want to see Jaden Hill run. Um, he's been non-contact. Um, but I want to see how he runs and how he cuts. Um, Who's going to, I want to see Jalen Kimber. We haven't really seen much of him. Who's nope. going to take that spot next to across the, the, the field from Jason Marshall. So there's a lot of storylines, um, a lot of young players that, uh, that we haven't seen much in the fall that I'd like to see tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And then obviously this is kind of be a chance for this team to create some momentum mm. going into the off season, but it also might be the last time that you see some of these Gators, uh, because as Nilly Philly Napier has hinted at, several times there is going to be some attrition that this team goes through and they are going to need players. You can't and, be very aggressive in the transfer portal when you're already over 85 scholarship yeah. players currently. And he's talking about giving walk on scholarships, Five scholarships, which would put you over well over 90. So there's going to be some attrition and it's not a, a it, fa out of fault of Billy Napier. It, it's a, it's not a bad look on Napier at all. No, it's going to happen everywhere. I mean, uh, Oklahoma with, with Brent Venables, you're going to have guys that went through Lincoln spring, Riley and that spring there or at LSU at USC that, Hey, this isn't the coaching staff I signed up for. This isn't the system I wanted to play in. Uh, I need to go and find somewhere where I can play right away or th for a number of reasons. And it's never been easier for players to transfer. Yeah. And now, you have the new thing that's kind of thrown a wrench into everything. And I wrote about it this week at Gators Online. It generated a lot of conversation on our message board, Nick. And that is where things are at with NIL. Mm -hmm. And I wrote about Marcus Castro Walker, Florida's director of NIL and player engagement, the role that he plays in all this, and some very candid and honest conversations and comments that he gave about how this is affecting the college game what Florida is trying to do, and you're either going to sink or swim. And Billy Napier has no intentions of sinking, no. and nor does the Gator Collective. But I think what folks have to realize is, and then I asked Billy Napier about this after the, the scrimmage, but look, I mean, but in the past, guys used to transfer because they were unhappy. Mm -hmm. They weren't getting enough playing time. They were homesick. They didn't like their position coach or a coaching change that had happened, whatever the case may be. Um, really the only time that guys left a school and there was nothing wrong was if it was like a grad transfer situation. Somebody or, just or, want uh, someone in the family sick and we're trying to get close yeah. to home. And But now you maybe already saw a little bit of this after the regular season ended, but I think now with NIL just becoming more and more prevalent, you are really going to see this spring some starters at major programs leave their current schools when there's nothing wrong. And the reason being, as Anna, as Lane Kiffin alluded to back in December, it's because they have opportunities to go make more money at another school in NIL with its collective. And, I mean, it could happen to Florida. It's, it's something to watch out for and be aware of. If there's a guy that hits the portal next week that you guys are like, hmm, didn't expect that to happen, some of that might be in play. So it's something that Florida is trying to navigate through and also be prepared for. And, and, and they're also going to still be able to try to use NIL to attract some players. And like I said, they have no intentions of sinking in this market. No, even if you put on those little arm floaties that Adley probably <laughs> wears in the pool. Yeah. Well, it's crazy because I asked Marcus, you know, Jimbo Fisher dismissed the rumor that their boosters spent 25 to 30 million in NIL deals on their recruiting class. He just dismissed it. Whether you believe that or not, the reality of some of some collectives having 10, 20, 30 million in funds is not far fetched. No. And for some schools, they're not far off. Mm -hmm. And I asked Marcus like, yo, how, how many schools are we talking about that could be in that space that would have tens of millions with their collective to offer to athletes? And he said, you're talking about 10 to 12 <laughs> schools right now. And have and have nots now. And so, and if you're Florida, 
where, where do you want to be? Are you one of the haves or are you one of the have nots? You know, I mean, so I, I think that's kind of the reality of things. There could be some regulation and guidelines that get put in place, but at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to stop athletes now from making as much money as possible as they can from name, image, and likeness because they have that right in this market. Yeah, it's it's really the wild, wild west right now, um, thanks to the NCAA, who not only dragged their feet but fought it tooth and nail yeah. trying to get Congress to stop this from happening. And then Congress is like, you're not special. These <laughs> kids should be getting paid. Um, I don't think anybody it, thought $8 million out of high school paid. Yeah, but, but, uh, but then the NCAA kind of just washed their hands of it and threw it up in the air and said, hey, uh, you guys figure it out. And so there isn't regulation. Um, it's it's state by state. Um, and, and it's going to lead to uh, probably some regulations in the future. But right now, you're going to have to play ball. But look, the schools already that have the biggest boosters and donors, the most money in revenue, and that have the biggest recruiting budgets, they're already dominating the sport. So let's not pretend like this. I mean, this is probably going to widen the gap some, but it's already happening. Look at the same teams that are in the college football playoff every single and, and year. Nick Saban this week is talking about, like, we need regulation. It's like, listen, you, you were touting um, <laughs> your quarterback getting a million-dollar deal a yeah. year ago, less than a year ago, and now it's a problem. Like, Alabama doesn't have – the funds to go out and, and offer kids like I, I I took a little exception to Uncle Nick's uh, statement this week. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, we are going to jump to this first break. When we come back on the other side, we are going to be joined by the head ball coach himself, Steve Spurrier, live in studios at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. Hi, Steve Spurrier here. You know, making a reservation at my restaurant is easier than a Saturday afternoon homecoming game against Vandy. You don't have to call or email. Just go to Spurriers.com. Hit the reservation button, pick a date, a number of guests, and a time. It's so simple, I can do it. In fact, I just did. Maybe I'll see you tonight. Welcome back into the Gators Online Podcast, and we are now joined by a very special guest, the man himself, the head ball coach and ambassador, Steve Spurrier. Thanks for joining us, Coach. Good to be with you guys here today. Yeah, at the restaurant here, we've been uh, thrilled that uh, the restaurant's been well-received by the people here in yeah. Gainesville and most all the sports teams at Florida, Billy Napier and all the coaches uh, bring recruits here and coaches and staff and so forth. So uh, we, we've been very happy thus far. And that's got to be a cool part, too, because I think a lot of people heard when you were uh, opening the restaurant, they'd get to see the memorabilia, they get mm -hmm. to eat here. But all the events that happen mm. here, this has just become like the spot here in town for. Well, I hope so. And uh, yeah, you know, we got the spring game tomorrow, uh, tonight, actually, Thursday night. And uh, Chris Doring and the SEC Network guys were in here last night. Yeah. So the TV guys come, uh, fans from other schools come. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we played Kentucky and basketball here, and a bunch of Kentucky basketball mm. fans were here that night. And I. A lot of times blow my whistle and say thanks for coming. And I told those Kentucky people, I said, now we can live with you guys beating us in basketball <laughs> most of the time. But dad gummit, you're beating us in football. Stop that. Yeah. Stop and, that. Uh, we're going to start getting mad at you people. So they thought that was sort of funny that uh, they, they're beating us in football. But that, that needs to stop. Hopefully that starts this year with Billy Napier and a, a new regime here with the Gators. Did, right. did Tennessee fans come last year when, when mm -hmm. they were in town? Yeah, they had a good crowd okay. here. Yeah, a good crowd came by. And, of course, I got a picture of Pat Summit down there. Mm -hmm. She was a really good friend, coaching friend of mine, and uh, one of the best coaches of all time. Uh, you know, we hear about women uh, – uh, being manager of the baseball mm -hmm. team, Tampa yeah. Tarpons down and everything. And I remember back when she was coaching, a lot of people said she ought to coach the men's team at Tennessee <laughs> yeah. as well as the women's yeah. team. And that would have been neat. Uh, I, I sort of wish she had done it, but uh, it didn't. It was too long ago, I mm -hmm. guess. Sure. Now, you mentioned mm -hmm. Tennessee. You got some keys to the city mm -hmm. over here from mm -hmm. Tennessee. If, 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 well, right, I'm right? from Johnson City. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think I got one or two. I, th I yeah. think they forgot they gave me the first one. So. <laughs> now, correct me if they I'm wrong, too. Event. I think Freddie told me that the only guy that's mm -hmm. got more keys to the city in this country is Barack Obama. So that's a, that's mm -hmm. a pretty good wall that you got over there. How many keys got? to the city? <laughs> we, need, we need to make sure that counts got, accurate, Freddie. We got to count them up. <laughs> well, obviously, everyone's been uh, looking forward to the spring game tonight, Coach. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of the first glimpse of yeah. Billy Napier's Gators. Um, what have been your thoughts so far on the team and just kind of what you've seen this spring? Yeah, I haven't really watched a lot. I don't think uh, it's my uh, position to look over Billy's uh, shoulder sure. and watch him mm -hmm. coach, stuff like that. But I've been to uh, a few practices. 
And uh, I just think the attitude's better. Mm -hmm. I think guys are more accountable, discipline, effort, attitude. You know, it seems like uh, uh, last year that slipped. Uh, yeah. And uh, I don't blame Coach Mullen so much, but, uh, you know, the assistant coaches – uh, the responsible for the players, but also the head coach is responsible for everything. Sure. So he's he's slightly to blame, and uh, I think, uh, but you can't allow players to miss tackles mm -hmm. and look like they're loafing. And uh, the fans, I think, uh, yeah. noticed that also. So hopefully, these guys uh, with uh, Billy and the staff here will really give us a team to be proud of. I, th mm -hmm. I think that's going to happen. Now, some yeah. fans are worried because um, Billy came in and mm -hmm. he's the head coach, he's the offensive coordinator, and he's the quarterback's coach. And mm -hmm. I think I, I read a quote mm -hmm. from you somewhere that said, if you got a job because you were calling mm -hmm. plays, don't stop calling, calling plays when you get Why there. Why would you change? Yeah. And, and there's somebody yeah. else uh, at mm -hmm. the table with us that, mm -hmm. that did all three of those when he was here. So what would you say to fans that are worried? You know, it's, it's interesting. I guess I was one of the first mm -hmm. in the yeah. SEC uh, when I j came in in 1990. You had Pat Dye. He coached just like Bear Bryant. They all tried to coach just like Bear Bryant. You know, back Everybody, in those days. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Majors, uh, the guys in Mississippi, uh, Billy Brewer and so forth. I don't know if another head coach called the plays back then. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Vince Dooley style and so forth. So, But that's what uh, got me a head job was our offense at Duke was uh, – Best in the ACC. I actually, we're number one all three years. I coached up there and and won the ACC. So that's that's how I do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can assure you, our assistant coaching staff wasn't anything like Billy's as far <laughs> as uh, reputation. I hired two guys never coached before: John Reeves and Dwayne Dixon, mm -hmm. two former Gators, and they were fantastic, excellent recruiters. And I brought four of my Duke uh, coaches down here with me. Uh, kept Jerry Anderson, who was a Gator, on the staff, and hired a couple guys that were free and available. So we didn't we didn't have the we didn't have to spend much money on our staff back in those days. Yeah, but to your point, I mean, anyone that's worried about mm -hmm. him not having yeah. enough eyes on the product, he's got an army of mm -hmm. coaches out there to mm -hmm. kind of help him construct that offense. Yeah, uh, you know, there's a bunch of titles out there. I, I think a, a lot of those guys are very busy with the recruiting and with the NIL yeah, and yeah. all of that. And that, that's – I'm sort of glad I don't have to fight all that. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on now. Yeah, we didn't have any of that in the 90s. In, yeah. in the 90s, we go recruit. And, and that's we had a recruiting season. You know, yeah. during the season, I tried to concentrate on our team, our sure. quarterbacks, our offense, our entire team. And then we had about two months to go recruiting and yeah. bring them in and then sign in February, yeah. Yeah. and away you go. Uh, and as long as everybody did it the same way, hey, it's all fair. Right. Yeah. But nowadays it's a year-round process. I think at the spring game tonight, oh, there's supposed to be, I don't know, 15, kids, yeah. 15, 20 of the top four or five mm. star guys in the country are coming. So yeah. it, it's a big night for recruiting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And. When was the first time that you got to meet Coach Napier in person? Mm -hmm. Do you remember when that was? Yeah, it's when he uh, he came here. Uh, he was announced, and I think they had an announcement party here at the restaurant that night. Yeah. Uh, I talked to him on the phone before that, so I, right after he got the job, talked to him for a bit, and uh, and then I talked to him then. But uh, yeah, he uh, he runs around with the quarterbacks. I think most of the time mm -hmm. during practice, uh, yeah. when, when I was watching, that's what he was doing. So that's the way to do it. You know, the NFL. They're, they're all hiring guys like that now. Yeah. John McVay and the guy at Cincinnati and uh, all over the place. Uh, they're, they're going for that offensive coordinator that scores points. Mm -hmm. and, and as we know, the game is outscoring your opponent now. Mm -hmm. It really is. And, and Nick Saban, he, he's not the offensive coordinator, but he tries to hire one of those sharp young guys yeah. Uh, yeah. like Kiffin, Kiffin yeah. and the other guys. They all get head jobs after they leave there. But that's uh, the trend is uh, a guy who can coach a quarterbacks, coach them well, and uh, and score points. So hopefully uh, that's what Billy does. Yeah. And Shane Matthews has always said he's a big believer and mm -hmm. that the guy that coaches the quarterback should be the play caller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and obviously mm -hmm. we see that from Billy. Be. What have been your just your early impressions of him as a as a man and coach? I know mm -hmm. he he said when he came in, he he sought out advice from people that have been mm -hmm. successful here, and I'm sure you're mm -hmm. one of the people he wanted to mm -hmm. talk to. Oh, I haven't had any long conversations with sure. him. He knows what he's doing. He has his plan in place, and uh, he's going to run with it. And, uh, you know, time will, will tell. I think we're a little bit behind probably talent-wise of the uh, Alabama, uh, Georgia, Texas sure. A&M. Sure. Those three guys uh, seem to have most of the money to spend in that NIL stuff. Mm -hmm. 
So we, we got to catch up there and catch up in recruiting. And uh, I think uh, once we do that, I think Billy and his staff can can put us at the top. Well, I said you could be a, a the number ten recruiting class uh, in the country and be fifth in the SEC. Uh, you know, behind some of those schools. So mm-hmm. it's not just competing against everyone in the country. You've got, like you said, Texas A&M, Georgia, and Alabama who are doing it. So you're playing a catch-up within your own conference right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're catching up a bit. But uh, uh, I'm impressed with uh, uh, the guys, the way they've uh, supposedly practiced and worked mm-hmm. this spring. So sure. I think we'll see a, the defense play well tonight. I do. I, I think the offense may struggle a little bit. But maybe uh, – I don't know the exact rules yet. Sure. Uh, I always told our defense you can play two coverages, man to man, and cover three mm-hmm. zone. So that's uh, gave the offense a little uh, advantage, yeah. Yeah. and no blitzing and so forth. So I don't know what Billy's rules are for the spring game. I guess we just got to show, uh, go and find out uh, when the game starts. Would you, when you mm-hmm. did your spring game, would you try to split them up? Mm-hmm. First team offense versus mm-hmm. second team defense, vice mm-hmm. versa, or would you try to split no. the rosters evenly? The first year we let everybody play. Now, the first year was in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Uh, we ripped out the AstroTurf, which was uh, by far maybe the best move I could have made when I got the job because the players loved that natural grass and mm-hmm. they hated <laughs> that hot AstroTurf. Yeah. Uh, so all of a sudden the players said, hey, this this coach actually is looking out for us. He's We're going to play on grass now. <laughs> and, uh, oh, that was a huge boost for team morale. Mm-hmm. It really was. So we had the spring game over in Jacksonville, and we let everybody play, and we sort of limited defense a little bit. Uh, and then the next year, of course, Shane Matthews had a big game and went on and won the job and became SEC Player of the Year, and we won the SEC first year. Yeah. So it all worked out pretty good. Uh, then the next year, we're getting ready to play at home here. And uh, we had three senior defensive linemen, I think Tony McCoy, Brad Culpepper, uh, one or two other guys. I said, you guys don't even have to play in the spring game. And uh, you've had a good spring, blah, 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 let, let the young guys. And one of the marketing guys uh, found out about it. He told Jeremy Foley, he said, said, Spurrier's not letting all the starters play. And Jeremy said, well, he doesn't have to. And he mm-hmm. said, well, we're trying to sell tickets. <laughs> $5. We still sell tickets $5 a piece for the spring game. Yeah. Some still and, do. Uh, and they used to make it really competitive. You know, uh, they we had the uh, steak and beans game. Steak and beans. <laughs> Winner got steaks. Losers got beans. Mm. And uh, – I think the year before, Emmett Smith carried the ball something like 25, 30 times <laughs> in a spring football game. Uh, so he, he, didn't want bean, he didn't want beans for dinner. That, that doesn't make sense. But that, <laughs> that's, we used to do a lot of things around the Florida Gators that needed uh, fixed, as mm-hmm. we, we know. So uh, we, we sort of changed the spring game attitude uh, that second year uh, here in 91. That's awesome. Yeah. Let the young guys play. Let them compete. You know, and maybe make some plays. We we knew who who could really play. Sure. And and so and a lot of walk on players got a chance to play also. And like somebody like Ventro Miller, he's going into his sixth year. How much do you need to see him play tonight? No. You know, you you know what yeah. he is as a player. Mm-hmm. He knows how to play football, mm-hmm. and you've got a bunch of young guys behind him, yeah. a linebacker. So this is their night. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and probably the best thing we used to do also, I don't know if y'all were here back in those days, but we gave all uh, awards at, at, at halftime of the spring game. Mm-hmm. And we, we gave about 50 awards, you yeah. know, like uh, everyday award, offense, defense, special team, uh, hustle award, most consistent, big play award, whoever made a big play. And uh, those kids love hearing their name. Mm-hmm. And we all the we give them a little old tiny trophy, you know, and their parents are up there going crazy. So halftime awards, uh, especially the walk-on kids. Now, mm-hmm. They got recognized in the swamp in front of a crowd and they picked up a trophy. And that, that was a memory of a lifetime for those kids. Yeah, and, and they certainly loved it, as their parents did also. You did that throughout your tenure? Uh, yeah, we did it. Uh, we did it every year here. That's awesome. Halftime award show. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, I, I love it. Uh, as we wrap up with Coach Spurrier, I do mm-hmm. want to ask you about one of your former players that is back in town. Mike Peterson is on Billy Napier's mm-hmm. staff. Um, I'm sure it's been cool mm-hmm. to see Mike Pete kind of in the hallways yeah. and back here. Um, just how awesome has it been to have one of your former players back here in town? Yeah, I've always sort of recommended to all the coaches come in if they could get one or two former Gators mm-hmm. here. It'd be neat. And uh, so we got Mike, uh, Billy. Uh, I don't know if he knew Mike much or not, but certainly Mike, wonderful reputation as linebacker coach. Uh, he was up at South Carolina. Uh 
Cheston uh, Blackshear yeah. is here as one of their assistant to yeah. to the assistant to the assistant. Yeah. Coach. <laughs> as, the, as the organizational yeah. chart goes, yeah. Billy. So we got three or four Gators, and I think Vernell uh, retained his job mm-hmm. as uh, administrative assistant. So yeah, we got we got several Gators on the staff now. Yeah. How, how gratifying is that for you uh, yeah. as a coach to see them? Go through their playing career and then and then find coaching and then start impacting the lives of young men. Yeah, we got uh, several, a lot, a lot, yeah. a lot of guys out there and about, and uh, it's neat to have a few on the staff here. Uh, I think I always tried to have three or four, but I guess I was a little more favorite favorite <laughs> to uh, Gators. Uh, than most of the other coaches, but uh, yeah, assistant coaches uh, uh, they're important. Uh, but the best thing assistant coaches can do is have a wonderful attitude and be an outstanding recruiter mm-hmm. and get along with everybody. That, yeah. That's basically it. The defensive coordinators, hey, here's how we want to do it. You right. know, the the guys that's calling the shots, that they got to be really sharp. And, and to me, the assistants, hey, how you want me to coach this? And then coach the heck out of it. Yeah, now, Coach, yeah. with the spring game wrapping up, that means mm-hmm. all the focus is going to be mm-hmm. on – baseball and softball season mm-hmm. i know my man nick yeah. wants to ask you a little baseball before we get out of here well gymnastics you know our lady gymnasts have a chance to win it all and uh, yes i told jenny Rowland, i said if, if they win it all then they really have won it all this year mm-hmm. they won the regular season sec yeah. the tournament i think they tied with auburn or something so they won it mm-hmm. and then they won the regions and blah 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 and, and if they win uh, the national they have won it all so yeah. they got Opportunity talk, to do that. Talk about a steak and beans meet tonight for for the gymnastics team. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, they've they've had a super year, but mm, I know they really want to they want to win it all. They want to win national championship, and certainly we got a team to do it. So they've uh, they've set their goals in their very high, and, and they're hopefully going to achieve it here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, coach, we're sitting here, and you've got a Heisman Trophy, you've got some national mm-hmm. championships, but someone told me you might have been a better baseball player than football player. I don't know if I was – I don't think I was better. But, Are you undefeated uh, as a pitcher? Uh, yeah, baseball was probably – and basketball were by far my best two sports growing up. Mm-hmm. And somebody – my buddies was telling me, you'll quit football once you get in high school because mm-hmm. there's nothing you can do well there. And, you know, nobody <laughs> threw the ball then. Yeah. It was a fullback, off tackle, option play, and sure. this, that, and the other. Uh, in junior high, I played linebacker and fullback, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, But I was a kicker. So since I kicked extra points and punted, uh, I sort of stayed out for the team. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, th- I was a kicker and sort of punter in my sophomore year. And then my junior year, we, we started throwing the ball a little bit. And then uh, my senior year, we threw a little bit more. And then mm-hmm. I became a football player for some reason. And, but we still uh, uh, played all three sports mm-hmm. uh, back then. Uh, we didn't, and I encourage young guys and and girls too to play as many sports as you mm-hmm. can, and then you'll know. Because if I started specializing, then I would have quit football. Yeah. I, I wasn't, I wasn't very good in football. Yeah. Man, yeah. the University well, of Florida would be way different if, no, if, if, if you if you had that. quit football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but totally blessed to well, come to University of Florida, mm-hmm. Coach Graves, and uh, meet my wife Jerry here, and so forth. So I've been extremely fortunate. And like you like mm-hmm. to tell a lot of people. When they ask you what was your best game as a player, mm-hmm. you don't go with football. Mm-hmm. You go with what you did on the baseball diamond. Well, it was uh, – yeah, we uh, we won it my junior year in Memphis. I mean, in Nashville. And then my senior year, we went to Memphis and the Memphis Christian Brothers, mm-hmm. uh, private school there. And, and they go to the state tournament just about every year. They, they are a baseball school. Mm-hmm. I don't <laughs> even know if they play football at the Christian Brothers High School. Uh, Paul Feinbaum, by the way, went to the Christian Brothers. Oh, all right. Uh, but they, they've won numerous uh, state championships and so forth, but uh, double elimination. So we beat them seven to six the first game, and I, I pitched eight innings. We had to go extra innings. Extra in there, yeah. Uh, so we actually had a day off. We won our first two, and then they beat another team. So we had to play them a, a day later. Yeah. So our other guy, uh, Bud Oxen, uh, was the pitcher, and they beat us actually 12 to three mm. in, in the first one. So that set up the the game for all the marbles. And uh, so I pitched eight innings, uh, one had a day off and then seven. So 15 innings in uh, uh, three days. Whew. And then last night I noticed uh, the pitcher for the Dodgers. Clayton Kershaw. Yeah. He, he's got a no hitter. Perfect game. Perfect game. Seven innings. They take him out. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, come on, man. You <laughs> only had like uh, 79 pitches too. And they took him out. Yeah. Less than 80 pitches. That, 
that doesn't make sense. But <laughs> I guess the perfect game wasn't important uh, to, to what they were doing. Yeah. Well, but, uh, but we held on to beat them. Uh, we beat them 7-5 the last game. And, I mean, they had two guys on the last inning, you know, and the guy flew out to center field. So we uh, – something good would always happen to us in baseball. I, I don't I don't have all the reasons. We didn't have a lot of major league guys. In fact, I don't think we had any that yeah. went to the majors. Uh, had one guy – got a baseball scholarship to Tennessee, though, okay. our catcher. Uh, so anyway, it was just, just the way it worked out. And it was just – you always cherish those games where mm-hmm. you win championships. Oh, memory of a lifetime. Yeah. Oh, memory of a lifetime. Uh, I got one buddy up there, Tommy Hager. And he played all three sports also, football, basketball, and baseball. And he was our leadoff hitter. And he he scored the winning run on about all the state championships, it seemed like. So we reminisce uh, quite often, you yeah. know. Well, so, Coach, we appreciate mm-hmm. you reminiscing with uh, us today. Yeah. Uh, join us to mm-hmm. uh, talk about the Gators, talk about the yeah. spring game. Before we let you go, I just want to say, Coach, I've interview, mm-hmm. interviewed you before. I think all of our listeners know yeah. how much mm-hmm. of a – HBC guy that I am. And uh, as Nick knows, you, you got to give people their flowers when you get an opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. coach, I just want to thank you as a guy that grew up in Gainesville yeah. uh, for everything that you did for this football program, this university, because I don't think I'd be a media member or have the life that I have that if, right? if you okay. wouldn't have done that. So uh, I just want to say appreciate mm-hmm. you. And uh, mm-hmm. it's been great to be able to get to know you as a media member as well. well I appreciate it. Uh, I think, um, uh, William James, he made a statement one time. He said, the greatest discovery of our generation is that a person or a team can alter their life with a change in attitude. Mm. So when I got here in 1990, all we had to do is change the attitude of Florida Gator football. You remember what? I don't know if you remember that far back, but it was just, uh, you know, we had all of our excuses lined up, and, and our favorite saying was wait till next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but players were already here. We, we were loaded with players, and all they needed is to believe we're good enough. And then Shane Matthews was already here. I didn't recruit him. He was already <laughs> here sitting on the dummies, you know, in practice. And uh, he got his chance. So, anyway, change in attitude. And yeah, hopefully Billy Napier is going to bring change in attitude for our, for our guys. Mm, no doubt. Right. Appreciate it, Coach. We're going to get to this break. We'll come back on the other side with Johnny Townsend. Thanks, for uh, Coach, for joining us. And you're listening yeah. to the Gators Online Podcast. Looking for more reasons to celebrate? We have them here at Celebration Point. Enjoy some of the newest additions to our already celebratory lineup, like Dave and Buster's, Le Macaron, and Prime and Pearl. There's always a reason to celebrate. Join us anytime for any occasion. Celebration Point, where Gators come to celebrate. Welcome back into the Gators Online Podcast, and we are now joined by Gator Great and former Florida punter, Johnny Townsend, welcome in, sir. What's Thank going you on, for guys? Joining Long us. time to see. We just had Better. Spurrier, but this is a big, this is a big one too, Zach. Yeah, this, listen, this is a Spur- big one. We got my favorite guest that I could have got on this show, and Nick's favorite guest that he could have gotten the show, all in one episode. Nailed it. I mean, he's and this is the second time you've interviewed him this week, and you got Jeremy Crawshaw this week. So like, yeah, it's a big, big week for me personally. Got coached, <laughs> yeah. talked to two, two of my favorite punters. Um, just need to. We need to correct what happened Monday. Um, I am part of the punting uh, community, the punting fraternity. Yes. Yeah, so what I meant to say before the, the audio cut off is, you are the punting community. You are the See. glue. You are the heart and the soul. Look at that for the brand. That's that's for the, the, the logo himself. Um, <laughs> well, obviously you're the logo of today's event, Johnny. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, have you been? How, how's you know life been treating you since uh, you last played here, man? Oh, it's been great. Yeah, just finished my fourth year in the NFL. I've uh, been all over the country. Um, and I'm just really scaling this foundation. Um, it's, it's coming along really well. And, and I'm excited to be back in Gainesville, you know, doing stuff with the former mm-hmm. players and still, you know, continuing to benefit chance. Now so. your foundation, when did you first get the motivation uh, to start this? Um, what was kind of the thought process and, and just kind of launching? Yeah. So I, um, uh, I got tied into a community service program when I was a student athlete. Uh, I'll tell Nick about it, but, um, they would just kind of throw the Gators out in the community and do little initiatives here and there. And one of them involved Shans. Uh, so we got to go and kind of, you know, put some smiles on faces and hand out some T-shirts and and do stuff like that. But, you know, as I went back time and time again, I saw some familiar faces, mm. uh, people that I knew on a first name basis. And I started to get to know the staff there well, too. And, and uh, you know, I thought it'd be just such a waste of my platform if I didn't find something to do to continue to help them after I left the university. That's awesome. So. And, and, the, and you tried to do it as as a senior and, and tie it in with your stats. Um, but the NCAA always looking out uh, for the community didn't let you. Um, yeah. So. 
how quickly after, it, I guess, go through that process. As soon as the season ends, your senior year, you really were able to kind of kick it off. Sure. Well, we punted so much. I yeah, thought, it, I, sure thought did. I was like, we can raise some dollar amounts if people pledge to donate mm-hmm. for every yard I punted, something like that. Well, people might have lost their, their houses <laughs> and they might have had to have a second mortgage. Take out some loans times. Yeah. to support that one. Um, yeah, a lot of punting yards, but... Um, yeah, so uh, the NCAA shot it down. They said uh, at the time you couldn't use your likeness for anything, even if it was charitable endeavors. Uh, so they said no. So as soon as I penned a paper, signed away my eligibility, I was able to do whatever I wanted. So, so how, yeah. How good of a feeling did that feel? And, and what was it like doing some of these initiatives in other communities first? Yeah, it's been great. So I haven't really expanded other markets yet. Um, everything I've done is primarily you know directly benefit mm-hmm. Shans. Um, and I'm starting to do events outside of Florida now. I got Nashville next week, and and wow. we're still going to benefit Shans, but just kind of out of state from a different, a whole different market sure. there. So, well, they say so, Gator yeah. Nation's everywhere, so I'm sure you'll find some some Gator fans up in Tennessee. It is, yeah. They got the Music City Gators there, mm-hmm. the Gator Club, and yeah, they right. they run deep. They run deep. So, well, obviously, you're going to have a lot of Gators in Gainesville today, and everyone is invited. You guys are listening to the show today as you are heading to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium for the Orange and Blue game. Make your way over to the Johnny Townsend Foundation Spring Game Tailgate. This is going to be an open barbecue with a DJ booth, incredible items that you guys are auctioning. And again, all of the benefits go to Shans. Um, tell us about this event, Johnny, and how excited you are to kind of put this on at UF. Yeah, I'm, I'm so fired up to do it. Um, first of all, we're hosting all the former players. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have about 68 former players registered and committed to attending. So you're going to see, you know, guys like Coach Steve Spurrier all the way up until some recent guys like Kyle Trask. Uh, so we got wow. a wide spectrum and, and a lot of years of guys coming together. So uh, but yeah, we got the whole right side of Gator Walk tented off. We got open bars, barbecue, DJ, uh, pizza. Pizza Bill is going to be DJing. Bill Feinberg and let's go. Uh, he's set up there. Yeah, so he's a, he's the heart and soul of the alumni there. But <laughs> um, yeah, it all benefits Shans. And, and we got some auction items ranging from Traeger grills to um, autograph Heisman footballs from Coach Spurrier himself. Whew. So yeah, it's going to be a heck of a day. We're going to so, ask. Uh, I got to ask you. There's uh, some of the sponsored ads you've done with Traeger. It seems like you have lost your shirt and are only wearing an apron <laughs> uh, doing these Instagram ads. <laughs> Oh man, you got to sell the grills, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You're selling grills, <laughs> selling grills. What um, how how did the planning of this event come? Do you go through Florida to to kind of align with them, and then how do you go through? Is it is it going through Pizza Bill's contacts just to get that <laughs> many that many former Gators um on on campus today? Yeah. So um, the UAA is affiliated with Tailgate guys mm-hmm. who kind of set up all these event spaces around uh, around the stadium. And, um, you know, when I was doing these fundraising endeavors in the past, it was all ge- it was all centered around um, UF mm-hmm. and the Gator community. And I was like, why not just go to the heart of the Gator community and, yeah. and host an event? So right. I got tied in with them and we secured the event space and we've just been, you know, planning it ever since. That's so, awesome. And so, Johnny yeah. and all those former Gators are going to be live from 3.30 to 7.30 p.m. at the uh, Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, North Lawn. So if you're making your way to campus, it's going to be very easy to find them. And uh, this is where you want to be hanging out before the game, without a doubt. Uh, and appreciate you, Johnny, for kind of putting this together. And um, obviously, it's uh, benefiting a great cause. So, um, And obviously, we get to see the Gators kind of make their first glimpse of this 2022 team. Um, but what's your excitement for that and kind of what Billy Napier's you know, bringing to the table here? Sure. Well, yeah, that's that's the real reason why we're here. We're fundraising for kids. Then we're going to see some Gator football. So, um, yeah, we're just excited for Coach Napier. He's won the offseason, in my opinion, and in most people's opinions. Um, he's got the respect of the ball team already. He's got a great staff around him. Um, it seemed like every week they were hiring somebody with a new title that you've never yeah. seen before. But, um, you know, they have a purpose. I met the whole Gator Made team and met the recruiting team, and it's it's quite the staff. So, I'm excited to see how they do tonight, and and uh, I think they're going to have a great year this year. It's good to see a head coach acknowledge uh, punters, kickers as game changers. So I think he's won the offseason just in the title for yeah. specialists alone. He won you over, clearly. Absolutely. I'm in. I'm all in. <laughs> how cool has that been to see his emphasis, though, on special teams and the fact that he's just trying to even just change the way that those players are viewed and how important that aspect is to the game. For sure. Well, yeah, people often forget there are three phases to the game, Mm -hmm. offense, defense, and special teams. And most games are, you know, won by, you know, what happens on special teams. Uh, Turnovers are a big part of it and, and changing field position and scoring points with kicks. Um, A lot of it goes unnoticed, but he, he sees a value in it. And, and as a specialist, I love to see it. Now you have a different would 2015 have been. Oh my gosh. uh, If Johnny's not flipping the field. I mean, been, they would have been going to the SEC championship. <laughs> Thank game, you. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I looked back at that punt. You know, that year we were lethal. We had guys like Keanu Neal, mm-hmm. Jared Davis, Alex yeah. Anzalone, some studs that were up there up front and then covering punts. So we had a lot of help. Every sure. time I hear Keanu's name, I instantly think that collision he had with Derrick Henry um, in Tuscaloosa. 
Yeah. Um, it's probably the only time Derrick Henry hasn't like gone forward when somebody's hit him. He had a heck of a game. I remember he had a pick six mm-hmm. and kind of kicked the game off, and we were feeling good. We were feeling <laughs> good. <laughs> we were feeling good. We were feeling good. We were like, we got him. Came out mm-hmm. the second half, got rolled. But um, yeah, that was a heck of a game. That's fun to play in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Now, obviously, you've gotten a chance to to visit a few times, and uh, there's some things changing here on campus in terms of the facilities. Uh, you and your brother got a tour of uh, the new complex that's opening up. Uh, what was it like kind of seeing that thing be built and just see the changes that are kind of happening here? A little jealousy. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say first emotion was just pure envy. I was, just, <laughs> I was hearing about the cryotherapy units they got, all these cold pools with treadmills, and, yeah. and they're going to have their own swimming pool out there with palm, palm, palm trees and stuff. But um, it is a premier athletic facility um, in all seriousness. I have never seen anything like it personally, just from the layout to the amenities to you know how it's structured right there against the practice fields. It's it's special. Um, so. What does that do for the athletes just kind of in a broader sense? And we've already tried to see Billy make some um, changes there with Mm. the meals, providing parking, even them giving them rides to the practice field. Like they're not having to make that long walk that you guys had to make. Um, That'll be eliminated once the complex opens. Just how much of a difference does that make to the guys and just their daily lives? It's huge. I mean, every like you said, the parking. That's one of those minor inconveniences we dealt with in the past, where you know you had you were rushing to get to workouts. You had nowhere to park. You had nowhere to put your stuff, and and he's just making the whole process easier on the players. Um, He's accommodating them. He's getting them what they need, and and in return, you know they're gonna you know put a good result. How many times did taps get you with those little Um, yellow envelopes? (laughs) I actually got banned from parking on campus permanently because of the amount of tickets in all seriousness. Wow. They got me for everything. If my tire was touching the line, mm-hmm. ticket. If I was parked, if I backed into a spot, I was parking facing traffic, ticket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one semester I had like two grand worth of tickets when I lived at Springs the, the over there. Parking ferries. Yeah. They, they the just, struggle they was real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how are you, where are you parking today? I have no idea yet. <laughs> we'll see. I don't even have a guest pass yet, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, Ho- hopefully Napier can get you hooked up with a guest pass. Um and obviously, you know, we talked a little bit uh, before we started about um, your NFL career. Uh, just what has it been like having that experience of get, going different places, um, obviously getting a chance to play with your brother yeah. um, and just getting that time, you know, in the pros? Sure. Well, you know, that's what you work for. Um, yeah. You know, most kids that are football players when they grow up, they have dreams of going to the NFL and doing all that. But I always wanted to be a Gator. Um, mm-hmm. That was my dream. And, and in my head, that was the extent of my football career. But wow. um, luckily, I had, you know, some success here and got to, you know, get drafted and, and just finish my fourth season. But the coolest part for sure was, was playing with Tommy. Um, you know, I've played football with him at every level of the game possible from um, flag football to Pop Warner to high school to college. And then now in the NFL, it's it's been pretty cool. How many so. brothers can say that? You know, you know every Not, level of the game, you've yeah, been on the same team. Not many. Yeah. The same position too. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just quite rare. I don't know how much you've talked about this in the past. Uh, can you just walk us through how that came together? What that those emotions were like for you and him and your family when that day happened? Uh, which one are you referring to? When you guys uh, last year, yeah, joined the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah, so I was actually with them in uh, 2020 for a while too. Yeah, um, I spent a couple months with them before I got plucked back to uh, Baltimore, mm-hmm. but. Um, this year was, you know, an interesting situation because I was going through a, a period of free agency of like two weeks and Tommy got COVID and I was the next guy up on their list. And, and they called me in and said, Hey, we need you to punt in three days. Tommy's Tommy's sick. Mm-hmm. Um, so flew out there and then two days I was suited up playing and the whole fan base was confused because <laughs> there hadn't been any news about Tommy with COVID and, and they see a Townsend run out, run out there with short hair and, and, uh, the panic was on Twitter. Did he cut his hair? <laughs> Did he cut his hair? Who's this guy? So, so it was cool, man. It was cool, cool to have that happen. Cut his hair and change his numbers. What's yeah. Going on? <laughs> yeah. I had the whole fan base confused. Um, it happened real fast. You did a yeah. Jersey swap. Yeah, we sure did. We sure did. So, um, we actually, I actually saw him earlier in the year when I was with Baltimore, mm-hmm. uh, we Jersey swapped, I think it was like week three of the season. Uh, when we played against the Chiefs. So me and Tommy got a cool, you know, opposing team jersey swap. And then we also did one when I was with the Chiefs. Now, with so. you being here with your event today for your foundation, um, kind of get, get you to reflect here for a second. But is it do you think about how much maybe things would have been different for you if you hadn't made that switch and, and decided to come to Florida and kind of fulfill those dreams of being a Gator? Because you were headed to Ohio State. I was. I was. And it's really funny, actually. So I'll tell a quick story. Uh, when I got to the Titans, uh, Coach Mike Variables there, mm. uh, he was coaching at Ohio State at the time, and he recruited my area in Florida. So I got to know him really well when I was you know, committed to Ohio State. And uh, the first thing he said to me when I showed up to the Titans is, he's straight-faced, why'd you decommit from us? <laughs> why did you commit from us still he holding was on to still it. holding on to it since 2012 he remembered that and that was the first thing he that's the first word he spoke to me since i decommitted mm-hmm. and <laughs> it's been six seven years eight years so that's like that. wild hilarious what'd you uh, say 
I was just like, ah, I just wanted to be a Gator. I had no explanation for it because <laughs> Coach Meyer had just got up there. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I felt like I was, you know, entering a Gator program because right. um, he had a lot of the same staff and mm-hmm. strength staff and stuff. So, um, but I just told him, I was like, I wanted to be a Gator. I wanted to stay close to home and it's in my blood. I couldn't do it. So, but yeah, that's the best decision I ever made was, was decommitting from there and sticking with Coach Muschamp and being a Gator. So, I think I wouldn't be as, as involved at Ohio State as I am now at the university. And, and uh, I wouldn't trade these experiences for anything, man. So, I, I don't think there's ever been a guy that's held a grudge that hard against a punter. <laughs> right? I mean, that, I mean, that he's clearly hurt. He understood, I thought he he understood joking. what he was you losing. Understand those feelings. Coach Vabel <laughs> understood what he was losing. <laughs> yeah. It, it wasn't a good start to his career in Ohio State. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought he was joking at first, but it's stone cold. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's joking. <laughs> or he's not, <laughs> oh, he's joking. not joking. I was like, he's not joking. He's not joking. So that's awesome. Well, we appreciate you coming and joking, laughing, and uh, sharing some time with us. And, uh, and appreciate the invite as well. We will be coming over to that tailgate, mm-hmm. take advantage yeah. of that. And I encourage all the Gator fans before you head to the stadium tonight to make your way over to the North Lawn and uh, take part in these auctions, take part in uh, supporting Shans and uh, helping the kids out. That's what it's all about. And what's the sure. website they can go to for the silent auction? Yeah, so anybody that cannot make it today, uh, we have an online bidding site set up with a uh, auction catalog of everything we have. And we got six Traeger Grill packages. We got autographed items by Danny Warfel. And we have a one-of-one Heisman football signed by Coach Spurrier, all the Gator Heisman winners, and 20 other Heisman winners. Uh, so it's a special piece. And that's all available through Saturday on an online bidding site. And it's going to be blasted all over social mm-hmm. media. So you guys got to check it out. And as so. Spurrier mentioned, there's something – Significant about that ball? Yeah. Uh, Steve, Coach Spurrier uh, so- circled all of the Gator Heisman winners' names on the ball. So you don't have to try to figure out whose uh, signature is whose. Uh, Coach Spurrier took care of you uh, yeah. if you take that ball home. Yeah, he wanted to be very clear who the most important Heisman winners were yeah. on that on that football. So, yeah, he took a little blue Sharpie and circled them up so you knew the Gator winners. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, uh, John, it's been fantastic. Appreciate you stopping by Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. And, uh, and and again, thank you for putting on this event, man. It benefits everyone. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, we're going to wrap it up here for the Gators Online Podcast. Appreciate Coach Spurrier for coming through. And uh, we'll be back next week live from Spurrier's Gridiron Grill to recap the spring game and take you guys into the offseason. For Nick and Johnny, I'm Zach Albaverde. <laughs>